I think I have the best job in the world getting to, to be a part of this great... There are people crying backstage, and I was one of them. It's just amazing. The next thing I get to do is to bring a friend to the stage, Hunter Lovins. Oh, well, she's already on the stage. She has attended SOCAP as a professor of business, as a climate activist, and an advocate of sustainability. And this year, she is here as an entrepreneur. She's one of the gang now. Change Finance went live today on the New York Stock Exchange with a million dollars invested in the first day. Donna Morton, sitting on the front row. It's a first woman-owned, woman-managed, stand-up change finance. It's the, the first ETF that is 100% truly fossil-free. And Hunter's here, and she's going to talk to us about moving our money from doing bad stuff to doing great stuff. So Hunter, take it away. Rosalie, thank you. It is urgent, and I am inspired. We watched Maria hit Puerto Rico. There is incredible risk in the way in which we are dealing or not dealing with climate change. Trillions of dollars at risk. And just north of us, we are seeing the very real and very human effects of climate change. 15 dead and 100 missing. Who's not here? Entirely too many. But Becky said, you don't change things by fighting the existing reality invent something better. The future's already here. It's just not widely distributed. We have all the technologies we need to solve all of the problems facing us. <laughs> Dr. Mark Jacobson down at Stanford. We can power the world 100% renewably by 2030. And Germany is on its way to doing it. Greenhouse gas emissions down, economy up. Thank you. Tony Seba, also from Stanford, says not only can we power the world 100% renewably, we will. Because of four things, fall in the cost of solar, fall in the cost of storage, batteries, the electric car and the driverless car, fall in the cost of solar three years ago, Citigroup, Citigroup, released the report Energy Darwinism, said this is the era of renewables because of the alarming fall in the cost of solar. Alarming to who? <laughs> National Bank of Abu Dhabi, they know a little about oil. Even at $10 a barrel, oil can't match solar on costs. And solar jobs are growing 17 times faster than the rest of the economy now. We build a new solar array every 150 seconds. This prediction came out in April. Solar will hit two cents a kilowatt hour in 2017. It just did. The Saudis announced a 1.7 cent per kilowatt hour solar array. And people say, we're going to be the Saudi Arabia of solar. Sa Saudi said, excuse us, we're going to be the Saudi Arabia of solar. <laughs> Actually, they're not. The Chinese are. The Chinese this year hit their 2020 target for deploying solar. These are floating solar arrays. Why? Because they can't breathe. The air that's out here, uh, Dorit Lawson uh, on the change finance team used to work in Beijing with the State Department, said she should have brought her masks from Beijing today. The Chinese can't breathe, so they're going clean. Last month, they announced they are going to start phasing out the internal combustion engine. They will launch the world's largest carbon market this year, and last week, Jerry Brown, I believe it was Tuesday, sat with Mary Nichols, California Air Resources Board, and said, Mary, 
If the Chinese are doing it, why can't we? Wednesday, Mary said, we can. Friday, Jerry said, we will. Now here's where it gets fun. Last October, the Fitch report said if Elon hits his target of a $35,000, 200-mile range electric vehicle, the oil industry is toast and the auto industry is toast. Little Tesla is essentially valued at the market cap of General Motors. Why? They sell 300 times fewer cars. Why? Because it's not a car company. It's a battery company and a solar roof company. It is an integrated solutions company. So uh, when the Aliso Canyon natural gas well blew out, Elon said, well, we'll just put in batteries. In six months' time, 80 megawatts of battery storage, world record time for deploying any kind of power plant at a price point about the same as a natural gas plant. Then Maria hit Puerto Rico. And our government stood idle. The hospital ship stood berthed at Norfolk for eight days. Is that OK with you? It sure ain't with me. So I was writing a piece last week for Huffington Post. Elon, Puerto Rico needs you. Elon was already there. The minute the wind stopped, he started shipping power walls. He is now in conversations with the governor of Puerto Rico about transforming the island using microgrids. We have the technologies we need. And so Bloomberg, cheap battery storage, could dump the credit market. The driverless car. I mean, we've all thought about, well, what are cab drivers going to do? What are Lyft drivers going to do? If Tony Seba is right, we are looking at the end, the demise, within 10 years and maybe as soon as five years, of the oil, gas, coal, uranium, nuclear, utility, auto industries, and the banks that hold paper in them. We are looking at the mother of all disruptions. And we've no earthly idea how to deal with it. It gets better. Mark Campanelli, who is here somewhere at Carbon Tracker, created these numbers. The about-to-be-stranded assets, the fossil assets that are on the books of companies like Exxon, which is, by the way, borrowing to pay dividends, and countries, all the oil-holding countries, uh, think Venezuela, amount to about 20 to 30 trillion dollars in assets that, if Tony is right, will be stranded within five years. We, we have some entrepreneuring to do. Divas Lonstrath, who was an SEC commissioner, said, it is entirely plausible, even predictable, that continuing to hold equities in fossil fuel companies will be ruled negligence. What's your money doing? So we decided to create a company to do something about that. Change finance. This is Hero, the buffalo, the bison, the symbol of the Native American. And we are going to move trillions from harm to healing. You want to come be a part of us? If you want a hero tattoo, come see, uh, come see Donna after this is over. We'll, uh, we'll be happy to set you up with one. And it's starting to happen, guys. The big companies are going 100% renewable. It's getting to be a who's who of well-managed companies. Mars, about a month ago, put a billion dollars into climate protection. Carbon Disclosure Project, CDP, has shown that the companies that lead in measuring and managing their carbon footprint have 18% higher return on investment than the laggards, 67% higher than the companies that say they're not going to report, they're not going to measure. When uh, the child in chief said, we're out of Paris, 14 states, 240 US cities, 1,000 plus companies representing 120 million Americans said, we're still in. A thousand cities around the world have said, we're going 100% renewable. Here's how I knew it was over this April. The Kentucky Coal Museum <laughs> put solar on the roof rather than plug into the coal-fired grid that was right there. 
it's over. But now we have the very real challenge of entrepreneuring the kind of world that we want to live in, a world of equity, an economy in service to life. And here's another challenge. We have left it until too late. My first book in climate change was 1981. If I were any damn good, we'd have solved these problems. We need to roll climate change backward. Good news, we know how to. If we take carbon out of the atmosphere and put it back in the soil, and Kat Taylor will have a great session later at SOCAP on how to do this. How? Hero, our bison. Grazing animals co-evolved with the world's grasslands, the world's second largest carbon sink after the ocean, which is giving up its carbon because it's getting too warm. If you manage grazing animals the way they co-evolved with the grasslands, dense packed because there were predators, now we do it with electric fences and opening and closing water holes. You not only transform the land, you increase the value of the land. Regeneratively managed, holistically managed, conventionally managed. Same picture shot from the same bridge in Wyoming, looking north, looking south, same day. Meet Gabe Brown, North Dakota commodity corn soybean farmer, until he realized he was going broke breaking the soil, planting annual crops. So he switched. First, he went to no-till. Then he went to cover crops. Then he brought on the animals. And in some of his plots, he went from a little over 1% soil organic matter, that's carbon, to over 11% soil organic matter in a, a span of 10 years. If we did this over the world's grasslands, in 30 years, we'd be back to 280 parts per million concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere. That's pre-industrial levels. We know how to do this. So Patagonia is getting into the act. This is kerns of wheat, the long-rooted stuff next to annual wheat. They're making beer out of it. Come on, if we're, uh, we're going to save the world, we've got to have fun. This is what inspires me. We know how to do it. It's urgent. We have to do it. Maimonides said each one of us must act as if the entire world were held in balance and anything that we do could tip the scale. So why am I inspired? Because you're all here. Let's go do it. <laughs>